oh my gosh. Welcome to episode one, season one of Hashtag Baggage. I am Ashley B and I am so excited to just unpack with all of you. But before we get into all that, I wanna make sure that you have subscribed and turn on the post notifications so you'll never miss when I upload a new episode, okay? So, um, y'all, let's just get right into the baggage. So I recently traveled to DC for the 4th of July weekend. And when I was there, I linked up with an old college friend that I hadn't seen since we graduated about three years ago. Um, and it was cool, like the vibe was still the same, felt like no time had passed between us. And we just talked about everything under the sun. So the topic of guys came up and she was like, whatever happened between you and so-and-so? And, -so? and Y'all, I knew there was a great possibility she was going to ask this question, but I was like high key hoping that she wouldn't, but I knew that she would. And so when I was on my way to meet up with her, I was just like talking to myself because I talked to myself. Um, I was like, Ash, if she asks the question, if she asks about old boy, what are you going to say? Like, are you going to tell her the whole story or are you just going to give her like the cliff notes version um and so i told i just you know decided to tell her everything you know and now i'm about to tell all y'all what happened the baggage and like the lessons i got from it so y'all settle in buckle in get ready to just Let's just unpack, okay? So I met this guy second semester of my senior year and we started kicking it pretty quickly. And when I say kicking it, I mean like we started sleeping together pretty quickly. Y'all, I'm not about to pretend as if I was always living for Christ. Like once upon a time, I was lost, now I'm found. Thank you, Jesus. So yeah, we started kicking it pretty quickly. And y'all know what happens like when you consistently sleep with the same person, talk to the same person, text the same person, cuddle with the same person, like you are bound to catch feelings. That's what happened. I caught feelings probably like maybe a month and a half, two months into like what we were doing. Um, but I didn't say anything because like I didn't want to be that girl that like pushed the relationship. And I was just like saying like, yo, Ash, just play it cool. Because eventually like, you know, he's going to bring it up and then like, you know, just don't try to rush anything. Just go with the flow. Time had just started to pass and I kept going with the flow, kept developing deeper feelings. And I just like realized that he was never going to like bring up this topic as more and more weeks went by. And I was just like start to trip like I was thinking like, okay, technically we're not official. So does that mean is he out there sleeping with other women? Like there's other dudes trying to get at me, but I'm turning them down because I got feelings for old boy, but technically we're not even anything like this is like, what is this exactly? Like if y'all ever been in a situation ship, like these things are straight up messy and they're just not, they're not healthy at all whatsoever. So, I mean, I guess, yeah, that's why I was in. I was in a situationship and um, I got tired. I got fed up. One night he like hit my phone. He was like, yo, I'm around your way. I'm going to come through. And I was like, okay, cool. By that time, I was just like, I was at my limit. And I was like, I need to talk to him about this. I don't care how late it is. We're going to have this conversation. So he came through and... Um, like when I got in his car, like of course we was like, hey, hey. And then I hit him with it. I was like, yo, I'm like mad at you. And he was like, I could tell. Because like I'm a person, if I'm upset, like my emotions all up on my face. So you're going to see how I feel, okay? Um, so he was like, yeah, I can tell. Like, what's up? And I told him, I was like, yo, I feel like you just don't have time for me anymore. And y'all. He said, it's not that I don't have time for you. It's just that I don't want to make the time. Yep. Yep. And then he followed up with the getting to know you was convenient. Like, what? Are you serious? Getting, getting to know me was convenient and mind you like in this moment i'm still back at the i don't want to make time for you comment processing all that 
and he hits me with the getting to know you was convenient i'm just like oh okay this is just he's just straight up like rejected me like this is just a no and then from then on he continued he like tried to clean up what he was saying because i feel like he understood like what he said was was a lot effed up then you get what i'm trying to say yeah so he was like you know you lived around nova it was easier to just come see you come pick you up but now like you're in the city it's a bit more of like a hassle and he just doesn't like want to do it and i was like just sitting there like when i tell y'all i just like did not react i was just like okay because what i was just processing everything and i was just like all right so basically what he just telling me is that the dude that I have been sleeping with for the past four or five months does not want to be with me. Okay, fine. So I go to like leave the car. I like open the car door and he's like, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Just like sit, come back in the car. Well, I sit back down because now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, maybe he'll like change. Maybe he's changing his mind and you know, maybe or maybe he'll say something that sounds good enough to me that will convince me to stay in this situation, even though I know this thing isn't healthy for me. Like, have y'all ever been there before when you just you just hoping someone would say something to keep you in the place that you're at because you want that thing or you want that person so much? Like, even if you know that is not good, is not beneficial for you, like. I'm not the only one so I sit back in the car and he just continues to explain like how he's not really in the position to like be in a committed relationship he wants to focus on his career and I'm like all right cool but I'm out like I'm a so I'm like leaving like this time I actually leave the car and he gets out and he's like yo can you please come back to the car and I just like turn around and like I tell him I was like what is there left to say i went back into my apartment and yeah i just like walked away from that situation ship. so i told my girl all this <laughs> i told her all this and she was like what like i never thought that he could be that kind of dude i never thought like he could ever act that way if he would ever say something like that to you and she was just like completely shocked and I was like listen sis I didn't tell you all this I didn't tell you this story to like change your perception of him like all in all I still think like he's a good person with a kind heart and he just had like a very poor choice of words to communicate his message um and like there's like no hard feelings you know and as for him saying what he said to me, like, never thought he would say that to me. I was like, but who was I to him other than, like, the jump off? Like, other than the girl that he was just banging. Like, who, who was I? Like, obviously, he didn't really care. And she was like, but still, I never thought. And I'm like, y'all know the emoji? Like, well, that's what happened. Um, and then like, I don't know how it came right. up. She was like, he has a girlfriend now. And I was like, that's great. Like, I wish him all the best in his life. Like, I think that's really awesome. I hope he's doing well. Um, and then we just like moved on from there and continue to do what we we're doing that night. And then like later on, when I was going back to my hotel, I was sitting on the Metro, just like chilling, minding my own business. And this thought hits me out of nowhere it was like why her not me and I'm just like I'm just I'm like what what I like look around because I feel like maybe somebody else said it out loud but no it was it was all in here and it came again it was like why her and not me and so the entire time as I'm going back to my hotel and even when I get there and I'm getting ready for bed, like I just start to feel away and the thought comes again, why her and not me? And so at this point, I just started praying. I was like, Lord Jesus, I just really need you to help me right now. Please do not let these thoughts, please do not let these feelings take root in my heart and in my mind. Jesus, I need you to help me. Like, please just help me. So I say that prayer and I go to bed. Next day I wake up and it's the first thing that's on my mind. Like the whole situation from like from the story, 
and then like him having a girlfriend and then again the thought comes like yo why her and not me and oh my gosh i proceed to like think this way for the next maybe like five days and like yo my mind just started tripping like when i got home i just feel like it just got worse because i was alone and i really had no plans i was just here by myself so i just you ever be alone with your thoughts and your thoughts just really just go places like so anyway um at one point i was on my phone and my thoughts were just like yo check your social media see what she looks like why her and not me is she prettier than me is she smarter than me is she taller than me does she have a better body than me why her and not me i like go to like the instagram explore page and my father type in his like username and like my thought like the logical side ooh. Thank you, Logical Ash. The logical side of me kicks in and she's just like, stop. Stop. You're tripping right now. If you go on this man's Instagram and see what his girlfriend looks like, how is that going to help you? How is that going to benefit you? How is that going to help you deal with the feelings that you're feeling right now? How about we stop and reflect and to think about why are we feeling this right now? Like, we know. We have no type of feelings for this dude whatsoever. Like, them Johns are dead, buried, cannot be resurrected. And that made me, even me, me knowing this, made me even mad because I was like, I'm tripping. I'm wasting my time. He ain't thinking about me. But over here, I'm tripping, though. Ugh. So I stopped. I just, like, throw my phone, like, somewhere in my living room. And I just, like, sit with myself, I sit with my thoughts, I sit with my journal. And I was just like, just talking to myself out loud. I was like, yo, just like really think about this. Is this really about him? Nah. So what, what are the feelings that we're feeling? And I was like, I, I get it. I see what's happening. It ain't nothing. It ain't nothing but the spirit of rejection coming back all, all over again. I don't know where that accent came from, but that's, it was nothing but the spirit of rejection coming back all over again. And I was like, all right, let's go back and think about what God, think about what we allowed God to teach us through that situation. Because that wasn't the first time that I was rejected, but it is the first time that I received the lesson that God was trying to teach me. And so when it came to the spirit, when it comes to the spirit of rejection, I learned three valuable lessons from all of that. And the first thing that I learned that rejection ain't nothing but protection, okay? <laughs> if you've ever heard the saying that man's rejection is God's protection, that is so true because that's exactly what it was for me. I don't know what would have happened had that man said yes let's be in a committed relationship with one another i don't know if that relationship would have been healthy i don't know if that relationship would have helped me grow i don't i don't know would have been would have been been behind that door i have no clue so it was protection and whatever god was protecting me from he protected me from it by allowing that dude to reject me so thanks thanks so that's the first thing Man's rejection is just God's protection. The second thing God taught me about rejection is that rejection ain't nothing but redirection. Because sometimes, like, we take ourselves off of the path that God has already set for us. And in order to get us back on course, he's going to cause a roadblock down the path that we're... He's going to cause a roadblock on the path that we're trying to go down, that we are trying to go down. And so for me, that roadblock was rejection, like, for sure. I was trying to go down a path. He didn't want me to go down. He said, baby, I'm going to have to block this so you can go right back on the course that I sat in front of you. And so, yeah, it's redirection, y'all. The third thing that I learned is that rejection ain't nothing but a blessing, for sure. Like, we have to change our perception of rejection because when we are rejected, we begin to think of like, oh, there's something wrong with me or like, oh, I wasn't enough or my GPA wasn't enough or I didn't get the promotion because I didn't bring in enough clients. Like we just, he we when we hear rejection, we automatically start thinking like, oh, we are inadequate. When in fact, that's not the case. God could have something so much better and bigger in store for you. You didn't get into that university. That's okay. He has the perfect university for you you didn't get that job that's okay he has the perfect job for you you didn't get into that relationship with that guy or that woman 
that's okay. God has the perfect mate or spouse for you. It's okay. That's okay. Um, also, God tells us that he will keep no good and perfect gift from us. So for me being rejected from that guy, that just tells me that that's not who God has for me. And God has something, God has someone like better in store for me. Like that's no shade to the dude like whatsoever. But that was just, you know, that's not God's best for me. And I only want God's best. That's all. I really only want God's best. And so that wasn't him. And so we have to start changing our perception of rejection and just start looking at it as a blessing and like okay I didn't get this thing that just means God is about to bless me with something so much more better with something so much more grand that I can't even think or imagine it okay so yeah that's all the things I learned from that from that situation and those are all the things that like I had to remind myself because sometimes we have to go back and we have to remember the lessons that God taught us. So, I mean, if there are any of you that are out there that are dealing with this spirit of rejection, um, just know that rejection, again, ain't nothing but uh, protection, redirection, and a blessing. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's it, y'all, for episode one of Hashtag Baggage. Um, thanks for letting me unpack with all of you. I hope you were encouraged, blessed, or comforted in knowing that you are not the only one that's been a real in a situation ship and you are not the only one that has been rejected maybe not by a dude but you're not the only one that's dealt with rejection you know yeah, that's that's all i got y'all that's episode one episode one uh, episode two is coming soon so make sure you have subscribed and your post notifications are on um and if you like this video give me a thumbs up okay get thumbs up and share it with somebody who you think needs to hear this message about rejection. All right, y'all. I wish you so much honey, salt, and light.